Hi, this is the advisor with Stacey Chalami. And today I want to introduce a very special guest of mine. We have Bracca Getz. She is a Harvard educated author of 40 children's books um, that help children's soul sh uh, shine. And she has authored a candid memoir for adults about jo joyfully overcoming food addictions. Uh, today, she's gonna tell us a little about the book and she's also gonna go over food addictions and how to help people overcome food addictions. So why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do? Okay, sure. Um, I think I have kind of an unusual approach. Um, basically, I write the children's books because I, I, I try to write the books that I wished I had as a child. Books that recognize where spiritual beings that need spiritual nourishment as much as we need physical nourishment every single day in order to thrive in life. And I see from your books behind you exactly what is what gives us spiritual nourishment. There's there's one thing, it's one word and it's on your book there. <laughs> and that, yeah, that word is gratitude. Gratitude fills us up until I learn that this is and this is the message that I'm spreading now with with my memoir about how I overcame food addictions and with the children's books as well, because if we can teach children these concepts early on, they don't have to play catch up the rest of their lives. They can get gratitude early on. It won't be that sense of entitlement, high expectations. It'll be finding joy in life, looking, looking and knowing how to look at this world with joy and with gratitude. I yeah. think that's excellent. You know, nowadays I look around and I see so many uh, young adults, even um, older adults struggling with being overweight and struggling, you know, to, uh, to, to lose the weight. Now you talk about overcoming uh, food addiction. How do you overcome food addiction? What's your approach? Okay, um, is this um, a video too, or is it only audio? It it's, is gonna. It's gonna be a. Um, I'm gonna. Re we're pre-recording it right now, and it's gonna be on YouTube, and then it's going uh, oh, good. on podcast. It's gonna be all over the place. Okay, I want to hold up a chart because this is helpful. I I learned about five levels of pleasure. This is not from me. This is ancient mystical wisdom. And it applies to us, it's timeless wisdom. So basically there's five levels of pleasure and they correspond to our five fingers because like, you, like your other book says, it's totally empowering. We can bring pleasure into our lives at any moment and through these five levels. So, and, 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 and as we said, there's only one price you have to pay to climb the pleasure ladder, and that's gratitude. So, so the, the lowest level of pleasure are all the physical pleasures. That's like natural, the natural foods, the healthy mm -hmm. foods. It's, it's movement, it's dance, it's doing yoga, it's being in nature, it's listening to music. All these physical pleasures Right. And this is the they fill us up physically and spiritually if we do them with mindful gratitude. Right. That's we it. So that. that's that's it. That's the and and so it changes your life. Overcoming food addictions. Mm -hmm. It's not about restriction. It's about pouring in the joy. Bring on more joy into your life. There is there is. We, we overeat from a sense of scarcity. There's not enough pleasure in my life. So right. this, this tastes good. I better keep stuffing my face because this is giving me pleasure. So if we recognize there's an abundance of pleasure, then we don't have that sense of scarcity. I better keep eating because there's not enough pleasure. So identify what brings you more pleasure than eating. Like on, on, on the show, My 600 Pound Life, Right. They say this is the only thing that was bringing me pleasure was food. So we we need to identify to overcome a habit. We need to bring in greater pleasures, not less. Pour in the pleasures through gratitude. Appreciate like 
like an orange, it's, I love to give this example because like it's, it's green. Right. It's camouflaged in with the leaves and then it becomes bright and beautiful when it's ready for us to eat, like right. the, the fruit. And so it's like, I'm ripe, come and get me. So then it's beautiful to look at. It tastes wonderful. And it's got this peel individually wrapped. The peel keeps the juiciness in for months. Right. And then it's got the pits, the seeds of eternity. These seeds create trees. They create endless oranges. And you compare that right. compare to um, an orange flavored tangy taffy. So that's made in a lab. It's designed to be delicious and addictive. And this, this stuff is designed to be delicious and nutritious. It's totally, totally different things. Right. It, so we, if we give our bodies what's good for them, it's a joyful experience and not the stuff that was just made to be addictive and get us buying more. And it's not, it's not made with, with infinite wisdom and loving kindness, like, right. like the natural foods are. So, so that's the way to overcome food addictions joyfully is to fill your life with gratitude through appreciating the natural physical things and then love, like a lot of people eat because they're feeling lonely. Yeah. Overeat. So right. in, you can bring, it's sweetness that you're craving. So bring sweetness into your life yeah. By focusing on the virtues of another, like even in solitary confinement in prison, right. a, per a person could focus on what a grandmother once did for them and they are filled with gratitude. They're uplifted. So we, we can bring these things into our lives at any moment, independent of anybody else, physical pleasures, love pleasures, meaning doing something meaningful being creative, that's an, you get into a zone where you don't feel like sleeping or eating even, you're on such a high when you're being creative in that zone. Right. The, the highest is transcendence. That's when we make that little crack in our bad habit. We do something new. We transcend our limitations. It's also what we feel under a starry, starry sky when we know we're a part of the greater universe. Right. And we feel a connection because we overeat because of disconnection, estrangement, anxiety, depression, loneliness. Right. So, oh, definitely. Yeah. So bring in the connections, connect to a physical thing you, you, you enjoy, a, a being, appreciate do something meaningful, give back with gratitude, creative, put a unique part of yourself into the world. And this is it, how we feel that connection between all of us, recognize how we're really all connected. We're never really alone. Right. Sense that, and that is what, this is the joyful way to overcome food addictions, filling up on gratitude. Because so many people, what I see is that either one, they've had a traumatic experience in their life. Good or, point. You know, two, they come from a dysfunctional family and they're dealing with a lot of issues. Because once you come from a dysfunctional family, a lot of those, you know, things that happen down your home stay with you. No matter, even if you become a better person, that yes. trauma, that trauma stays in you. The hurt, right. all those feelings you know, you can't get rid of them. You want to, but you know, they're, they're in your heart and it's very hard to get rid of it. And a lot of times, even though people improve themselves and they move on in life, they are still carrying a bag of weight from their past exactly. or people, you know, that, you know, that trauma from their family has hurt their self-esteem. So people who have gone through a lot in life, step one, how do they get rid of that baggage? Because it's very hard to get rid of that baggage. You know, you carry that baggage and no matter what you do, you still have a hole, that pain in your heart. So how do you get rid of that pain so you could positively not use food as your addiction, as your pleasure source? Beautiful question. Thank you so much. Exactly. We need to be 
nourishing our hungry souls through gratitude, but at the same time, when a person has been through trauma, especially in childhood, they have levels, layers of protection. They don't even seek connection or they can't because of all those layers of protection which are necessary in order to cope. Right. In order to cope with the trauma, we have had to create layers of protection yeah. so that we don't get more hurt. It, it was necessary. So what is necessary? In other words, a person needs to be filling their day with loving kindness through gratitude, through giving themselves all these pleasures, appreciating what they do have. At the same time, the, the light can't even get through and their resilient soul can't exactly. even shine, right, yeah. uh, unless they get therapeutic intervention as well. It could be, it could be getting coaching from you, Stacy. Right. Getting getting support from somebody. It could be a group, but it's it. They need that therapeutic intervention to help remove all those layers of protection, so the nourishment can get through. Right. But, but both are needed at the same time. It can't be only the therapeutic intervention. At the same time as that is happening, a person needs with compassion to be filling their lives with these moments of gratitude and loving kindness. This is how a person actually reparents themselves right. and gives themselves the pleasures they may have been lacking before. Um, you need both. You need yeah. the th therapeutic intervention as well as you need to be always nourishing your soul by practicing gratitude. It doesn't mean necessarily um, getting more things. No, it's, it's actually, we have a saying, who is rich? Those who are happy with what they have start appreciate, but you can't even do that until sometimes you get the therapeutic intervention and then you yeah. start being grateful, like all the illnesses you don't have, right. all the, the body parts that are working in your life. Oh, yes, definitely. You know, the the it, power of positivity. Exactly. Like, let's say um, during the, the pandemic, I feel it kind of pushed all of us forward because we all learned to be grateful for the most simple things that we were taking for granted before. Oh, 100%. Yes. Yes. I so agree. like, like, like getting together with other people, like hugs, like breathing. Yes. And our own health. So these are things that we now, we don't take for granted. And we have to maintain that, that not saying, of course, instead feeling grateful to source. Yes. All the abundance of pleasures that you do have in your life this very moment even though you may not be focused on that because right. there's like a self-destructive impulse inside of all of us, getting us to focus on what we're lacking. Yes. And we have to fight back every moment and say, oh yeah, you're trying to get me to focus on what I'm lacking. But right. I, I have so many gifts right now in this very moment. Like just an apple itself is like such an amazing gift. Yeah. So, yeah. So one, I agree totally with you because when we go through trauma in life or we have a dysfunctional family and we grow up in a, in a very negative atmosphere, I feel we bring, we put up walls. I see so many of my clients, we, they just build walls around themselves because they don't want to get hurt, but then yes. it numbs you emotionally yes. and yes. The, the pain is still there and you're going in the refrigerator or you're going out and you're using you're using food as a pleasure source. So using therapeutic help, I think that's an excellent idea and an excellent comment because it will help you reconnect because after so many years of pushing those emotions down, people become numb inside and they know the emotion is there, but they're so, they don't feel it. They become like zombies. You know, they feel the pain, but they can't tell you what the emotion is because they have pushed it down so far that they don't even know. They know that they feel in pain. They know they feel upset, but they can't tell you what those emotions are. So getting ther therapeutic help 
And using those tools and strategies that you just mentioned, I think is excellent. I think that is such a great um, idea that you have. And those tools and resources that you just mentioned, I think are excellent. Excellent. No, oh, thank you. It, what people get used to, to avoid the pain, what I learned is that you, they, the opposite of pain is actually comfort. Yeah. It, it takes away the pain, but it doesn't bring you pleasure. Right. It, bring, it brings you that temporary comfort. So you're not feeling the pain. And that's what a person gets used to. They get in the habit of comforting themselves and then they don't experience pleasure in life. Right. And that's possible to, um, we have, as you know, neuroplasticity, yes. we can rewire our brains to practice gra gratitude. Any minute that you are experiencing gratitude is a moment you're not being miserable. Yeah. Just, that's it. Just experience 100%. one moment, one moment yes. by itself. And I yes. think when you made the comment about when we had COVID and everybody had lockdown, you know, when you, when you don't realize until something gets taken away for you, it could be the simplest, littlest things in life, but you don't realize how meaningful it was until it's taken away from you. Because sometimes exactly. we abuse the things in our life because we are so, you know, blessed with so many things, especially in our country that we don't realize how valuable it is until it's actually taken away. And then and you realize. I love it. I have a picture of that. Now, only those who can see the YouTube, but I'll, I'll describe what this is. I love yeah. this. This is called the value of something. Here's a big, big, um, a big, let's say a building of right. before, before you have it, how much you value it. Yeah. And after you lose it, how much you value it. And when you have it, this is an exaggeration even. Yes, you know, you know, exactly. You, you, <laughs> you appreciate it so little when you actually have it before you, before you get it, you need it. And after you've lost it, but when you actually have, that's what we can practice. We can practice experiencing that joy when we actually have it. We could do it, practice just, that's one of the wonderful things about yoga too. You practice just breathing yeah. and feeling it and stretching. And it's the most amazing thing. Um, and you practice it with an orange. You practice it with the smallest things in life. Right. Because, oh my gosh, there's this great quote. Enjoy the little things in life because one day you'll look back and you realize those were the big things. Yes. And so many people that I've worked with, especially even people who are older, you know, they got sickly, their car, they weren't able to drive anymore. They abused how valuable a driving the car was. And then, you know, they said, you can't drive anymore. You know, you're not, your legs aren't strong enough. You know, you're unable to drive because of this reason or that reason. And when you live in the suburbs or the country, driving is everything. But you don't realize how valuable driving is until it's taken away. Yes. Now you yes. talk about meditation. When do you suggest a person does meditation? Is it good to do it in the morning, the the nighttime? Do you suggest like a specific time that it's really that works the best for an individual? Great question. Whatever works, but for me, it as part of my actually Jewish practice, we meditate all day long. And I'll explain, I don't mean that, but what I mean right. is when I focus on, I say a blessing before I eat an orange and mm -hmm. after, right. this, is a, this is a meditation. Believe it or not, after we go to the bathroom, there's a blessing. Mm -hmm. Just thanking that all these organs are working right. Right. Oh my gosh, those that can't go to the bathroom, it's a real gigantic hardship, a huge challenge. Oh, trust um, me, I know. You know, yes. especially you go on my website and you 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 hear people talk. You, I have articles about constipation. Those are like the biggest, you know, people go on that like crazy because it causes such a backup and pain and this and that. People don't realize when you have working organs and you could actually go to the bathroom. Oh, my God. You know, people take again, people take these little things for granted until it stops working or it doesn't work sufficiently. Exactly. And just eating the, mo the food with the most vitality and moving. These are the best things. Right. So because our bodies were designed that way. Yes. So it's really very simple. Like we don't need complicated diets. 
just you know eat in alignment with nature it's and um and and live that way as best right. we can and that's also the way to fill up on gratitude it's it's a mindful meditation just breathing here's life we give it out to the vegetation right. mm -hmm. and the vegetation gives it back to us here's mm -hmm. life this is a this is a meditation all day long if we look at life with our eyes open wide this is this is a meditation it's a prayer too right sometimes when i'm dancing i feel like this is a prayer i'm giving out you know yeah. it's my way of expressing it so yeah do 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 whatever brings you joy that's a meditation on life and it brings you peace and calmness and it it just gratitude it helped it's the it's the energy that your soul needs to shine. That's exactly the fuel that it needs. I agree with yeah. you 100%. Now I'm going to hit you with a question that is challenging, but I know you know a lot about. So now everybody that suffers from any type of addiction, especially food addiction, we, they relapse a lot. You'll see people, they, they try so hard and they lose a bunch of weight and they're so proud of themselves. Their self-esteem went up. They like the person, they look in the mirror and they say, I'm so proud of myself. I love myself, you know, and all these other good stuff. But then to maintain that weight is very difficult. Pe many people have a relapse. They gain the weight, then they lose the weight, then they gain it back, then they lose it. It's like a roller coaster ride, you yes. know, and then some people give up and then, you know, so how do you approach that? Like, how does a person either continue to lose weight until they reach their sufficient goal or they maintain that weight that they're happy with because instead of gaining the weight back, because it's a very hard uh, thing when people, you know, are, you know, they're trying to live a normal lifestyle and we're in a go-go society and a lot of the food in the, in the market is not so good for you. And, you know, they're, they're struggling because the temptation is there. How do you not relapse? Well, wonderful, wonderful question. And uh, in my memoir, I actually detail, oh my gosh, you, you experience what the binges that I used to have were like, it's yeah. horrible. You were there with me. <laughs> on the binges, yeah, you, it, the binges, and then fluctuated between that and the restrictive dieting. That was the prison that I was in. It yeah. was a horrible, horrible way to live, one or the other. And and what I want to say is, it's a different kind of life I have now. I I'm not dieting, you know. It's just eating in a natural way. It's a big joy. Yeah. But here's here's what I want to say is the thing is to focus on is only the victories because the food all the junk food is designed to be addictive it's oh, not yeah. yes it's not your fault when you eat that stuff it's designed to make you want more and more and more because you know it's got enormous amount of fat and sugar and salt yes nothing in nature is like that Yes, it's it's more like they said it's more like cocaine or oh, cigarettes, yeah. the effect it has on your brain. Yeah, so it's it's making you crave more and more. Plus, your body isn't getting the nutrients. Right. So I, I have a children's book, Let's Stay Healthy, where I explain this to children. What happens when you eat this um, these chemical like, let's say the orange flavored tangy taffy, my body goes, whoa, what are you giving me? It, it it becomes inflamed yeah. just just like if you get a cut mm -hmm. if you get a cut your body gets inflamed to fight and and try to help that cut yeah if you if you eat this stuff your body's going whoa this isn't natural right it, it draws out the nutrients in your body in your bones in order to try to digest this unnatural substance so it causes inflammation and when you eat it chronically, it causes chronic inflammation that causes yes. chronic disease. So it, it, don't blame yourself. It's, it's made to make you overeat it. That's oh, what that stuff is. So 100%. the more it, we can eat the natural stuff, the better. And we're just not going to like consume at a whole bag of oranges because it's filled with fiber. It fills us up. It's a whole different right. type of experience than the whole container of ice cream, the whole box of chocolate chip cookies, the whole bag of potato chips, which we could easily just go through. Right. St stuffing it in. So when the, when you when you relapse, 
you understand this is understandable. It was made for me to relapse. It was meant to be addictive. Okay, I'm just gonna do, just celebrate my victories. Don't feel so bad when you relapse. That's understandable. Of right. course, it's gonna happen, but just celebrate any victory. The next day, fill your life with more of the natural foods. Right. Don't, it ha doesn't have to be anything all or nothing, no, but just fill it up as much as you can with the things that really bring you gratitude. Right. That's, that's, um, that's really about what it is. And, and that's how you fill your days up with joy. Yeah. Knowing, knowing there will always be relapses, but right. just celebrate the victories. Yeah. And I've done so much research and, you know, sugar is so addictive that you actually go through a withdrawal process when you are trying to get yourself off the sugar and the, and even the, even the fruits that contain so much sugar, you know, there are certain things that you should and shouldn't eat. You know, we don't even have time today to go through all that, but you go through a withdrawal process. But once you are able to get off the sugar, you don't crave it anymore. And then when you taste it, it doesn't taste so good anymore. It's right. like overwhelming, like a taste that's, you know, and I always tell people it's okay in moderation. I, I believe, you know, once in a while, if you want to have a little something, but don't get hooked on it, you know, it's and then people who have a hard time, you know, you know, and they have that addiction. Don't even try, you know, once you get into that healthy lifestyle, don't go near it. Just like alcohol, you know, right. if you are, if you are really addicted to food, you know, and it's not just, you know, you're trying to lose weight, then don't even go near that. It's just living a healthy lifestyle. And like you said, being, having gratitude for everything around you, looking at life in a positive way and just living the healthy way and not craving all that other stuff, like retraining the mind that that stuff is, is harmful to our body and it will hurt our body and just focus on the good stuff, like the oranges, the apples and everything that you talked about and focusing on that gratitude because gratitude, I think is so important in life, just like you mentioned. Exactly. And the younger we can teach children these habits, because all of us that got in bad habits of giving comfort through the junk food, yeah. you know, let's, we train our children so they don't have to go through that unnecessary pain. You know, we, we can fill their lives up with the healthy treats and they'll still see somebody else has this kind of garbage, but you know, yeah. <laughs> but you know you'll say, okay, um, now you're educated, you know, you can taste it and you'll see what it tastes like. They, you, they won't be desiring. It won't be like, completely forbidden because something that's so forbidden everybody wants but yeah. it's, you get that it doesn't have all that you think it will give you you know right. once once you've experienced the the really good stuff i mean if you've had a date or a watermelon there i don't think there's any candy as sweet as that right. and yet it, it's nutritious for us it's yeah. got the good stuff in it too right so it's not like that stuff is sweeter. It's not true. Um, this food was designed to give us plenty of sweetness, but in a good way, yeah. in, a, in, in a healthy way. Yeah. Now, I feel yeah. like in today's society, the younger generation has so much more stress than we did. You know, I feel like it's a go-go society. It's always been a go-go society, but there's a lot of pressure on the younger generation. Like, we didn't have to do as much to get ahead in life as they do. You know, they have a lot of pressure and, you know, they, they try to, you know, they're always on the go. They want to get the grades, you know, and they are trying to just grab the easiest thing around them to eat and stuff like that. And even the, 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 the food, you know, like I won't name the names, but there are certain foods, you know, diet foods out there, you know, and you look at the ingredients and they might say diet food, or they might say low calorie food, but but then you look at the ingredients and it's really bad for the body. And for these younger kids that are under so much stress, what do you suggest these college kids, these younger kids in high school that are getting ready for college? You know, that it's, we just live in a society that never stops, you know, and, you know, there are some states where things are a little slower and that's great. They don't have as much, but like states like New York, New Jersey, you have some of the states in West, in the West coast, they're always on the go, rush, 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 rush. How do you help these kids that are under stress and even adults that never stop the parents that are running, going from, from one game to the next game, bringing their kids and then run, rushing to work and doing this and that, or the moms that never stop. 
how do they, how do they, you know, have the time? Because they're so tired and withdrawn. They just want to grab anything and they don't care. But then they, they gain all this weight and they become addicted to these foods. And then the problem starts. So how do you yeah. help these people? It's really a trick. People need to get back to what is the purpose of life? The purpose of life, really? We were here to experience gratitude. That's, that's, our, that's our actual reason for being here. Yes. We've, we've gone so far off track. Oh, 100%. This world is the most beautiful garden. Yes. And we forget that. We do. And we rush around. And when we stop and, and pause and take life a little more slowly to smell the roses. Yes. To, 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 to savor an orange, yeah. to, to breathe more slowly, then we start to enjoy life. And everybody can do it. Yeah. It's, it's possible because we think we have to keep rushing around, but that's that voice inside of us. Yeah. That's, that's that nasty nagger, nagger in there saying, oh, you're missing this, you're lacking that, fear of missing out, you know? Mm -hmm. But, but it's, it's, that's endless. What happens is the emptiness inside gets bigger and bigger. It's a bottomless pit. And right. we, the more we feel the emptiness, the more we try to fill it with externalities and the deeper the hole gets. Instead, what fills it up? You know the answer now, you know? Gratitude, yeah, that's exactly. it. Exactly. It fills us, appreciate what you already have. That is true wealth. Right. Now, not searching for something else out there. You'll see it's a, it's a whole different life. It is a whole different life. And I feel like we, when we take a step back and we have gratitude and we actually, like you said, take, take time to smell the roses, life becomes different. We yes. start to see a different side of life that we never did before. And it's yes. a very special side of life that, you know, you can connect mentally, physically, and spiritually. And I even believe that our health improves when Absolutely. we slow down, when we actually have gratitude and we appreciate what we have instead of focusing on what we don't have. And that's the problem. I think. Exactly. There was a new article in psychology today. Researchers have found that the most positive feeling that reduces inflammation mm -hmm. and causes disease fighting chemicals to be released in the body right. are, the, are the feelings of awe and wonder, transcendence. The, it, it, it's proving ancient mystical wisdom is correct. That sense of awe and wonder about life causes good health in our bodies, decrease of inflammation, the disease fighting chemicals are flowing. And it's it's actually the way to be healthy is to appreciate life. Yes. Now, when people see that transcendence, how go into more detail about what it actually is, because some people might not understand the concept. Well, transcendence means transcending your limitations, transcending the separations, seeing the connections. Okay. Between everybody and everything, between all of us mm -hmm. and source, like source energy helping all of us. We are, we are really, we are really one big soul. Right. It, we're in separate physical bodies, but yes. spiritually we're all connected. That's the amazing thing, you know? So, yeah. and when we recognize this, then that fills us with that sense of abundance. I agree takes away the scarcity. It's, it's, it just transforms our life. We are and, all the same being. Yeah. I believe that. And yes. we all have special gifts. And instead of trying to compete, we should work as a team and use Beautiful. our special gifts with each other to Beautiful. make a better world. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, when you talk about creativity, explain to people what you mean by creativity. So creativity, everybody has a uniquely beautiful soul. If we all have one big soul, but we all have different streams of light coming out of each of us. It's in a completely different way, just like each snowflake is different, you right. know, and, and our fingerprints are different. We have 
the most beautiful light to share with the world and a, a unique presence in each of us. And that's why it all shines together of the light. You can't actually separate light. Right. But 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 it's all connected. And yet we each have something amazing to contribute to this world. So what whatever it is, it could be you know, it could be in sports, it could be in, in gardening, it could be in cooking natural, healthy food, it could be in kindness, it could be in philanthropy, it could be in, in writing, you know, whatever, yes. what, whatever is your thing, right? When you do it, it lights up your soul and it lights up other souls. And Excellent. it's, it's the best feeling. It, uh, well, it's the second best feeling, but it's it's a very it's a lasting pleasure. Right. All of these are more lasting pleasures than the junk food, which which lasts this long. It lasts while it's on your taste buds. It lasts for about three seconds, and that's it. Yeah, and that that's why you got to keep overeating it because it's so doesn't last. It's so fleeting. Yeah, and then. And then the pain will come back if you're not comforted. Instead, bring in real pleasures that last. And now you know what they are. Yes. Yep. <laughs> now explain a little bit about the meaning. So just briefly explain what that concept means. Meaning is doing something good and positive in the world, something meaningful. It could be as simple as stuffing envelopes for an organization to do something good in the right. world. I, I was on a show. I was on another podcast and I was explaining about how doing something meaningful stops you from overeating. And the host said he was feeling lonely. He had two slices of pizza and then he was just going to plow through the rest of the box of pizza. <laughs> yeah. And a knock came on the door and his neighbor needed help with something for two minutes. He went, he helped his neighbor. He came back in. He didn't want the rest of the pizza anymore. Right. He, he just did something meaningful. Right. He helped his friend. He put the rest in the fridge for another time. Excellent. It was no longer calling his name. You know, right. the minute we start thinking about it, like if I open the window and let in the sunshine or go out and feel the breeze. Right. I text somebody. I text a message to someone and I say, you know, I really appreciate what you did for me the other day. They don't even have to respond, nothing. Right. When you do that, that that bag of potato chips stops calling your name so loudly right that minute. Also, you don't even have to do it. Just thinking about doing it. Yes. And the bag of potato chips stops calling your name. It's it's better than magic. You just try it and you see how this works. You think about other things that could give you pleasure from yeah. this. Now you know what they are. And and then you're not, it stops having that power over you as it did before. And I love doing that. Like I love giving compliments to other people and, you know, and looking at them and seeing what, you know, is special about them and then giving them a compliment because I think, you know, that makes their whole day. You see them glow, you know, because not everybody does that. And, you know, people really appreciate when you see the beauty in someone else. Yes. And when you just could say a couple of words, nice to another individual, their, their whole, it, it just makes them light up and you probably change their demeanor for the rest of the day. And yes. all it takes is a couple of seconds to not look at the person's flaws, but to look at the beauty of that person and then say, you know what, that's a pretty shirt you're wearing. Oh, you know, you have such nice eyes or, you know, oh, that's so nice of you. And you could see the difference just by their body language. Now, briefly go over the concept of love. Now, what is your, when you talk about love, Go over that really quickly. Yes. Again, this is an ancient mystical definition. This is not coming from my head. Right. It's actually the, a rabbi. He's no longer alive. And he taught it to us that love, the definition is focusing on the virtues of another. What do you appreciate about someone? That's it's that simple. Yes. It's <laughs> and so you can do it at any moment. Mm -hmm. focus on the virtues of a person and you have created a connection between right. yourself and that person. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> now, the physical, go over the physical really quickly so people understand that concept. Yeah. Physical, the physical pleasures are concrete 
natural things in this world. So eating a walnut, you know, and by the way, in one of my children's books, I explain about these things. Some of them have descriptions written on them, like the walnut, it looks like a tiny brain and it helps your brain, especially helps the brain. Yeah. There's other things like that too. It's, it's um, in my book, like celery, it helps the bones. Right. You know, it looks like a tomato helps the heart. It's, it's especially, oh, and if you cut a carrot, Mm -hmm. If you slice a carrot, what do you see? It looks like an eye. Yeah. Carrots are especially good for the eyes. It's amazing stuff to teach children. Yeah. All about our, the wonders of our fruits and vegetables. So it's all, it's, 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 it's appreciating nature. It's music. It's the, it's the sense. It's all of our five senses enjoying things that um, are in this world designed right. to fill us with gratitude. It could have been that we took a pill, a tasteless pill every day. Yeah. But no, we were meant to experience this gratitude with our full senses. Enjoy yeah. all these wonderful natural foods that we have and the ability to move and dance and garden and be and be in this incredible world. Yeah. I love it. I love it so much. You provided <laughs> us with so much valuable information. Now, if we could wrap this all up, like if you had to give a couple of really valuable tips to, to, to the listeners, how, what kind of tips? Give us a few tips that could help people, you know, get them on the right track and, you know, get them started to a whole new way of retraining their brain and moving forward to a more healthy, productive life that's full with gratitude and love. I love your questions. You are so wonderful. Terrific. <laughs> it's great. It's great. What, the first thing is when you feel like overeating, it's the back of your brain that's activated. You know, your amygdala, yeah. fight or flight. I need right. the food. I got to have this food. If you can get the neurons to go here, all of a sudden they're in the prefrontal cortex and you say, is it my body that's hungry or my soul? Right. You ask that question with loving compassion and with loving awareness, you will know the answer. Right. It's your soul that's hungry for more pleasure. We're here to experience the greatest pleasure possible in life. That's really what we're here for. And how do we experience that? With loving gratitude. That's it. So you, you do something else that brings you pleasure. You need more pleasure. You're overeating because you want more pleasure in your life. Right. That means you need more gratitude. Yes. So you do that. You ask, is it my body that's hungry or my soul? Right. Second question. If I eat 95 more spoonfuls of this ice cream, will I then feel full? You know you won't. You know yourself. Right. It will, it will never fill you up. Yeah. It's not that. True. It's gratitude. And, and the third thing I want to say is, which is an awesome thing to do, and the first time you try it, it's so boring, is, <laughs> yeah, is to chew slowly. Oh, my gosh. In other words, you don't fill up your next spoon yeah. full or forkful until you've completely chewed and swallowed what you've eaten. Right. It slows you down so much. Oh, it does. You're sitting there, yeah, you're sitting there going, doing absolutely nothing but chewing <laughs> and it's so boring but that's what all of a sudden you start mindfully focusing on what you're doing and like wow oh my gosh I can actually taste what's in my mouth right now yeah you can linger longer right. you can you can savor the moments more and it starts transferring out from just your mouth into the rest of your life you start experiencing everything with more mindful gratitude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's so funny. You say that because my family would always make fun of me because I would be the last one at the table because I would choose slowly, but I would end up feeling full and I would eat less. And it's, it's, it's so funny that you said that. I love it. I love it. And it's so true. So true. Yes. And also now where can people find you? Like if they want to learn more about your books, more about your, your theories and what you went over today and your book, your memoir about addiction, you know, food addiction, where can they find all this great information? Yeah. My children have created this amazing website and um, 
and it's like a bookshop as well. So it's called Getz Bookshop, getzbookshop.com. And Getz is spelled G-O-E-T-Z, not normal. It's like with an O in there, getzbookshop.com. So that you'll find everything there. You'll find all kinds of stuff, presentations and books and everything and how to contact me. Yeah, it's all there. Oh, wonderful. It has been such a pleasure talking to you and you have provided us with so much valuable information. Thank you so much for coming on the show and thank you for everything. You're doing a wonderful job and I think you're going to help many, many people, you know, overcome a lot of different things and also, you know, give them pleasure to, to all these wonderful stories. Because I looked on your website, I saw so many different books and so many different children's books that on such wonderful topics and your new memoir about food addiction. I think that's an excellent book and I can't wait to start reading it. Thank you so much. And thank you for coming on the show. Oh, thank you, Stacey. You are amazing. You resonate like awesomely beautiful. Thank you. (laughs) Oh, you're very welcome. You have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye, Stacey. (laughs) Bye-bye.